When you first open the Access Program, you're given a few ways of getting started. We can choose from a recent file from the left of our screen, or we can create a new database file on the right. In the middle, there are some access templates to choose from. I will choose one of my recent files, the Access Video Lecture. And now that we're in an Access database, you'll notice that it looks quite a bit different from other programs that we've used. You'll also notice that I'm calling my file a database. Whereas Excel is a spreadsheet, ideal for performing calculations and working with smaller amounts of information, a database allows us to store large amounts of data. Let me show you what I mean. On the left, we have the navigation pane. This is where we can view all of the objects that have been created in this database. First, we have tables. I'll double click on the company table to open it. Now this table displays information about 18 different companies. It has the name of the company, their address, phone number, and so on. These are actually quite similar to the tables that we learned about in Excel. On the Home tab, you will see the View button. Get familiar with this one because we'll be using it a lot. Each object has several views that help you create and modify that object. Let's look at the design view for this table. This is where we create the column headers or fields for our table. We have each of the field names, their data type, and then room for a description. Notice that the first field, Company ID, has a key next to it. This indicates that the Company ID is the primary key. The primary key is a field that has to be a unique value. Each table needs to have a primary key so that you can tell the records apart. Numbers or ID numbers are usually a good choice for the primary key. To set the primary key, click on the field name and click Primary Key. Click it again if you wish to remove the Primary Key designation from a field. Next, we have Queries. Queries are like advanced filters where you ask a question of the data in your tables. The Kalamazoo Company's query is asking our data which companies are located in Kalamazoo. By opening or running the query, we can view these companies. And we have to design each query carefully so that we get the correct results. Let's just give this one a minute to pull these up. Okay, so we have two companies that are located in Kalamazoo. Let's look at the design view. And I'll just pull this up so we can see it a little easier. Now this is where I designed my query. Notice that I chose three of the fields from the company table, the company name, city, and contact last name, and put them in the grid below. This grid is called the design grid. The first row of the grid tells us the name of the fields that have been added to our query. The second row, table, indicates the table the field came from. The sort row has a drop down menu for each field that allows you to sort by that field. So let's sort by the company name in ascending or alphabetical order. The show checkbox indicates whether you want to see that field in the final query results. Sometimes you want a field to affect the query, but you don't need to see it in the actual results of the query. Uh, for example, the city field will show only Kalamazoo, but we've named the query Kalamazoo Companies, so this field could be considered redundant. The criteria row allows us to filter the data. In this case, we're showing records where the city field value is equaled to Kalamazoo. The OR line allows us to add a second criteria where the record only needs to meet one of the criteria in order to appear in the results. Let's say I wanted to show records where the city was Kalamazoo or the initial contact date was before January 1st of 2010. So the first thing I need to do 
is from my field list here is to find the initial contact date. There it is at the bottom. And I'll just double click to add it to my design grid. Now coming down to the OR line, I would place my criteria here. So I've got Kalamazoo, my first criteria in the criteria line. And my second criteria would go in the OR line. So I'm going to type anything that's less than or before 1, 1, 20, 10. I can then run my query to see the new results. The next object type is a form. A form allows you to view one record at a time in a customized format. You've probably seen lots of forms and never even knew it. Anytime you've filled out your information on the internet to sign up for a mailing list or purchase something, you were filling out a form and your information was being added to a table in a database somewhere. Let's create our own form for the company table. With the company table selected or open, go to the Create tab and click Form. Now we have a simple form where we can type in a new company. Forms are ideal for situations where someone does not need access to an entire table of data, but they do need to add new information to the database, like when you fill out your contact information online. Lastly, we'll look at reports. Simple reports can be created using the same method we use to create a form. Just click the report button instead of the form button. Let's open up the products by company report that was already created. Reports are another way to customize your data and they're perfect for times when you wish to print information. One of the most important and powerful features of an access database is something called relational power. In our database we have two tables, a table of company information and a table containing product information. Right now, these two tables cannot talk to each other. We could not say which products are sold by which company. Using relational power, we can link these two tables together so that we can connect the information in one table to information in another table. First, I'm just going to go ahead and close all of my objects that I have open here. And I won't save any of the changes. So to create a relationship, I'm going to go to the Database Tools tab and click on Relationships. Click on the Show Table button to add our tables to the Relationships window. To join the tables together, we need to determine which piece of data can be found in both tables. I notice that the company ID field is in both of my field lists. By clicking and dragging my mouse from one to the other, I can create my relationship. You always want to enforce referential integrity when creating a relationship. This will keep you from entering invalid data into your tables. If you tried to add a new product to the product table, but entered that it was being sold by a company that did not exist in the company table, you would be given an error. Let's click Create to finish our relationship. Now our relationship is complete and these two tables will share information. If we open the company table, and click on any of the plus signs next to each company, we will see the products for that company. When you are finished working with a database, you always want to compact and repair. Let's close this information. The compact and repair can be found here on the database tools. It is also under file and it's the first button here. Compacting and repairing your database will reduce the size of your file and it will manage any technical errors that may have occurred while you were working with the data so that you don't lose your work. 
If your file needs to be uploaded to Blackboard or sent to someone, make sure you close the file first. The access files we use in this class only allow one person to be working with the file at a time. So if you're still using the file when you turn it in, it will be locked and no one else will be able to open it. If this happens, the extension on your file will be .laccdb, standing for Locked Access Database, instead of the correct extension, which is .accdb.